Hello boys and girls, uh, I'm here today to talk to you a bit about the painting that you can see behind me. Now this is a painting I painted some years ago and uh, a lot of you will know it and are interested in it so I've been asked if I would tell you a few things about it, how I came to paint it and uh, how I painted it and a few other little things. So we'll start with how I came to paint it. Now, as I've just told you, I was an artist and I was working for an exhibition, which is what artists do. They generally have a goal and uh, so they work towards getting together as many paintings as they can to show and hopefully sell. At this time, I was living across the road from this building. And out of my windows, I lived in the attic slightly higher up than this building and at that time I had quite a few windows all around my flat and I had done paintings from all of them. I hadn't done this particular painting, I hadn't done that particular view uh, because it hadn't occurred to me to do it. But one day, one winter's day, the snow fell very heavily and just like a Christmas card with snow lying actually up the windows and it was very very beautiful and I thought that's a painting for me to paint and that's really why I started doing it. As you can see it's a large painting and you might wonder how I did that and how long it took. So I can tell you that it was too big for me to paint up on an easel which is what you would expect me to do uh, because if you think about it, this is me standing here beside it. If I was to try and stretch up to the top of that picture, I couldn't possibly paint it. So what I did was I painted it on the floor. I knelt on the actual picture and painted the top bit. And then when it was possible for me to paint it standing up, which, is, which I normally do and is much more comfortable, I then moved it onto a big board and finished the rest on the board. And people have asked me quite often how long it took. And I can tell you it took six months. Six months of very concentrated daily work to finish it. I started it in the winter and I finished it in the summer. I chose to do the snow at the end. Now I can't quite remember why I chose to do it at the end, but that meant that when I did the snow, it was in June and it was a heat wave. So there wasn't a, a, a drop of snow likely to be anywhere and I could not think what snow was like. Because in order to paint, because this is one of the, the, the secrets about, about painting, is that you paint what you feel. And I couldn't feel snow. Snow was an alien concept at that time of year. Sun's blazing, it's a great hot day. I needed to do this, it was the finishing off of the picture. And if the snow didn't work, the painting wouldn't work. So therefore, I had to get the snow and I did not know how to do it. And then I thought, I've got a friend who's an architect and it's very possible that he will have books of perhaps Norwegian architecture, which being Norway or Sweden or any of these countries will have a lot of pictures of houses in snow. So I asked him if that was the case and he said he did have these pictures. So I took a book of Norwegian architecture and I took it home and I put it down and I started looking at it. And this may sound fanciful but it is exactly how it happened and I turned the pages and turned the pages and looked at all these pictures of snow and then suddenly my memory was sparked of snow, the feeling of snow came to me and I was able then to very quickly go and throw the snow, literally the paint, on because I had to do it fast while I could remember it. And the bit in the whole picture that I am actually most pleased with because it was going to be difficult and might not have worked and could only be done once was these tracks here in the snow of the car because the snow had fallen and nothing had moved. It was pristine snow except for this one car which had gone in there. So I had to get these lines in the snow and hey, by some magic which I cannot claim was my skill, 
it worked and I was very, very pleased. Another question that uh, some of you have asked me quite often is about the people in the picture and uh, how they came to, to be there. And naturally, you're not knowing how I did this, so it's hard for you to imagine how it came about. But the fact was that I was living in this building for about four years before I painted this picture. And every day, and I worked in my living room, and my living room windows, little windows in the attic, overlooked this building. And so I used to, very often to rest, I would go, I had a big broad windowsill, and I'd very often go and I would put my elbows on the windowsill and I would look out at this building and gradually over the years got to know all the people that were in it and the things they did and it just quite subconsciously. So when I came to paint the picture I actually had four years of study of that building in my uh, kind of memory to some degree. So then I started pulling things out of my memory and watching very carefully the building as I went on painting it, as I went on doing uh, the preparatory work because the actual tableaus in the, the pic in the windows were done after the building was painted. They were, they were put in after the building. So I had plenty of time to work out what I was going to put in there. And all of it is real. There, there, there isn't anything actually in that picture that's invented because I didn't know at that time that this painting was going to become a popular painting and find its way into a public domain because if I'd known that I would have hesitated to put in real people who might have objected. However, I didn't know that. So all the people are real. Um, and I am myself in it, a much younger version of myself, because this was painted a long time ago. And I'm actually sitting in here, uh, in, at this party. This is, this is Norman's house. And Norman used to give great parties. He was famous for his parties. And I occasionally went to his parties. So, so I wanted a party. I wanted to show that kind of life in the building. And, um, and there's quite a few well-known people in this building, but I shan't tell you who they are because perhaps that might not be appropriate. So uh, you can perhaps find out. Um, a lot of you also have been interested in the cat, which is in the picture, and that's in here, this cat. Now, these are huge, huge flats, and that cat there, it, this is the dining room of this flat here. So this is the what they would call in Edinburgh the drawing room, and in Glasgow the living room or the sitting room. Uh, that's where the party was taking place, and this is the table where all the goodies and everything would be laid out, and so therefore the cat's just having a look at this table of goodies that it might jump up and consume. But the interesting thing was that at that time also, I didn't really know as much about the people in that flat as I, as I did subsequently. And I had seen a cat in this flat at one point, and I'd seen it in here sitting beside a sofa. So I thought, again, as I was saying, I, I made up the pictures from what I had seen previously and what I wanted to create interest in the picture, and I thought, I'll put a cat in. So I put this cat in, and then when the picture was painted, and I showed it to this man here, um, there was great laughter when it turned out that the cat that he had sitting there beside the sofa was never a real cat, it was a china cat. So I had invented a live cat out of a china cat, and such are the imaginations of an artist. A lot of you have also asked about the title, and uh, I think it's in some of the literature about it, uh, possibly even here in Kelvin Grove, beside the painting, that originally uh, I, I had a great difficulty finding a title. Finding titles is not an easy thing, and you've got to get a good title a painting, it means a lot. I had several ideas of a title and there were two that predominated. One was Winters in the West, which it became, and the other one was Norman's Cocktail Party. And Norman's Cocktail Party was, of course, the party that I was talking about that I painted myself in. However, that was a little bit humorous and they decided it needed something with a little more gravitas, as they say. 
So it became Windows in the West. Now the reason it's called Windows in the West is because, for one, it's in the west end of Glasgow, and two, it's in the western hemisphere of the world. It's a stone building, uh, and 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 depicts the kind of life that that people live in the west as opposed to the east, in a very broad sense. So that is why it was called Windows in the West, and it seems to have worked.